In this conference, we try to bring together different perspectives on how different types of owners, family businesses, family offices, institutional investors, investment funds, sovereign funds, private equity firms, and other investors, how the different nature of those investors shape the structure of governance of those companies, and how boards of directors need to play a very important role trying to understand not just one voice of one shareholder, but trying to understand who the different shareholders of a company are, and more important, who the other relevant stakeholders in this company actually play an active role. There is an immense diversity of ownership of companies around the world. In most countries, what you observe is that there are what are termed large block holders, shareholders who have significant blocks of shares in companies. And those dominant shareholders tend to take a particular form. Namely, they tend to be families. Families are by far and away the most important shareholders in companies around the world. Now, why is that important? Why, why does it matter that ownership is often very different from the typical description of the Anglo-American model? What those family owners seem to do is to give a long-term perspective to the conduct of a company. One of the things that we've seen in the last 20 years is a lot of money and a lot of attention flowing to the big mutual fund companies, the asset managers. And um, the question that people are asking is, do mutual funds have a role in the stewardship function, helping to uh, drive corporations to consider the broader interests of society? So a lot of my work has been focused on the structure and the incentives of asset managers to determine how well equipped they are to play that role. One of the challenges that I see is that asset managers really are a series of layers, right? You've got at the top, you've got the asset management firm, the people who run that firm, the CEO like Larry Fink, the governance staff. Then you've got the individual portfolio managers. They in turn manage the legal entity, the owner of the assets, and that is the mutual fund. But those funds are then managed on behalf of customers, beneficiaries, who have their own interests. Well, we are seeing passive investors increase, largely because retail investors are leaving the market. Rather than manage their own portfolio, they've decided to buy into an index portfolio, or they've decided to buy into an exchange-traded fund, both of which are run by passive managers. On the active manager side, we are seeing the appearance of very aggressive hedge funds, which think that they can force companies to make changes they consider to be desirable. The manager tends to have a more of a manager of the corporation, tends to have a more long-term perspective and will hold on to investment for several years while it matures. The active manager of an aggressive hedge fund wants immediate performance or he wants the company to get rid of that investment and that's why there's tension. We have seen recently in the US and around the world uh, an increasing importance of mutual funds, asset management managers and public pension funds as investors in public company. We believe it's important to understand these asset managers because they own an increasing fraction of US public company and public companies around the world. They are repeat players, so they have an incentive, at least in theory, to monitor and to get informed about the companies they are investing in and given their increase in size their decision are going to affect not only corporate governance but more general the economy and society as a whole. So we have a big uh, debate today about what happens when companies go public. We first of all don't have that many companies that go public but some companies still do uh, and uh, what's different today is who is buying the shares uh, increasingly the shares are being bought by uh, pension funds and by index tracking funds uh, who have certain expectations from the companies that they invest in. One theme that's very prominent in the United States 
uh, and also in Europe is with which control structures do people go to the market. In the United States a very popular uh, control structure are uh, shares with multiple voting rights. So the founder retains uh, disproportional control uh, and then sells non-voting shares or shares with lower votes uh, to the general public. In Europe we have a new phenomenon. Um, Italy a few years ago and now Spain are introducing something called loyalty shares. So when you've held these shares for a certain number of years, uh, the voting rights uh, essentially double. Well, I think that certainly the issues around corporate governance in private companies are really very important. And there's an area which has been perhaps relatively neglected. And I think the importance can be seen in a couple ways. One is, for instance, if you look at the United States, and look at how many companies are publicly traded, that's fallen in the last 20 years by a half. So we have only around 3,500 publicly traded companies today, while we had 7,000 in the uh, late 1990s. Uh, another indication is where institutional investors are putting their money, that there's a lot more interest in areas like uh, putting money into private equity, into various asset classes like real estate and so forth, which are essentially private private assets. So we have this big influx of money into these privately held companies, but in many cases, it seems the governance is not always as well developed. I'm a practitioner. I work for BlackRock and I uh, have been involved in corporate governance from investor perspective for more than two decades. Um, I think this uh, event is a wonderful opportunity for me to hear what academia is working on, to hear about different papers that are looking at corporate governance, because corporate governance is not static, it's evolving, and uh, these type of joint events between practitioners and academia are really important in moving us forward. Yeah, more and more I see governance as a, with a much more strategic de dimension. It's about the opportunity to create value not only value for the shareholder, but also value for the planet and for the people and communities.